For the materials for this project, I'm going to be using a purple weight 3 acrylic yarn and also a sage green acrylic weight 3 yarn, a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, my crafting scissors, and then not shown on here because there's not enough room <laughs> is 18 gauge floral wire, um, hot glue or tacky glue, and then wire cutters as well. If you are an absolute beginner at crochet, I would recommend checking out my Crochet 101 beginners video to learn how to do the specific stitches in this. This video I'll make as in-depth as possible, but if you do need extra practices, I will link that in the description and above wherever it will go. <laughs> We're going to start by grabbing our hook and our purple weight three yarn and creating a slip knot. So I'm just creating a little loop like this and then pulling that loose end through to create a slip knot. We're going to attach this onto our hook and if you pull the small tail end, it'll tighten it nice and snug to the hook like this. You can also pull the other tail end to make it looser, but we're going to be doing it quite snug. Now we're going to chain 48 chains. Now because this is my updated pattern, the stitch counts kind of vary from my first video that I uploaded about lavender at the beginning of 2023, but this is my updated pattern that I use. But the fun part about this pattern is it's totally customizable, so if you want to make your lavender longer or shorter, decrease the amount of stitches, increase the amount of stitches, you know what to do. We're going to be doing 48 chains now, so yarn over and pull through that loop on your hook. That's your first chain. Yarn over, pull through, that's two yarn over, pull through, three, yarn over, pull four, five, my words are getting all jumbled now, but just keep yarning over and pulling through that loop on your hook until you get the desired amount of stitches and chains that you want. Another thing to remember while you're doing these chains is to maintain your tension correctly with the same amount of tension, because if you start doing really loose stitches like this, you're going to have one jumbo stitch and one tiny stitch. So just make sure to maintain that tension, which again, I show how to do on my Crochet 101 videos. If you need more practice, definitely go check that out. Doing one more chain, and now I have my 48 chains. Now we're going to be working in the third stitch from the hook. So this is the first stitch from the hook, this is the second, and this is the third. Going into this top part of that stitch, so if you can see there's the top part of that stitch, only go into the top part. I've seen some people go into the entire stitch, both loops here. That won't make your lavender do the curling effect. So just make that space prominent so you're actually crocheting into it. We're going to yarn over on our hook and insert our hook into that third stitch. Yarn over and pull through the first loop. We now have three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through the first two and then yarn over and pull through the next two. All right, so that was called a double crochet. We're gonna do two more of these double crochets in here. So yarn over and into that exact same stitch, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through the first two, and then yarn over and pull through the next two. Now we're gonna do one more in that exact same space. So yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the next two. Now we're going to do chain three, so just yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and one more time, and then into that exact same stitch, we're going to do a slip stitch. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and then continue pulling through that last loop on your hook. This is going to create the top of the lavender flower. We'll now continue to crochet into the rest of the chains. So into the next stitch here, again, we're only going into this top part of the stitch because that's what's going to create the curling effect. So we're not working in that same stitch anymore. Go into the next one, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and create a slip stitch. So continue pulling through. We're going to chain six. Two, three, four, five, six. Go back into that same stitch and put another slip stitch. And that's going to create our first little petal. Go into the next stitch and we're going to do the exact same pattern. So slip stitch, yarn over, pull through, continue pulling through. Then we're going to chain six. Go back into that same stitch and put a slip stitch. Now into the next stitch, the exact same pattern. So slip stitch, chain six. 
back into that same stitch, slip stitch. That's going to be the pattern going all the way down each and every chain. Slip stitch, chain six, slip stitch. I think that was six there. I always lose my count whenever I'm talking to you guys. But next stitch, we're going to do a slip stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six chains. Going back into that same stitch, slip stitch. And as you can see, as we go down each chain, it is starting to create this curling effect. And that can only be done if you keep crocheting into that top part of the stitch. If you crochet into the entire part, it's just gonna make one straight line. It's gonna be very difficult to put on the stem afterwards. So make sure, please, please, to go into that top part of your stitch. And I'll meet you towards the end. Okay, so I've been crocheting down the entire length of the chain and I only have one more chain left to crochet into. So let's do that quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then crocheting back into it with a slip stitch. Now to fasten this off, I'm just going to grab my scissors and just cut a short tail end. You do not need a long tail end for this project. You can just simply pull your hook away from the project and it'll fasten off for you and create kind of like a little knot to hold everything all together. This is what the lavender looks like without the stem and we're now gonna be putting it on the stem. With me here, I have an 18 gauge floral wire from Michaels. This stuff is from Michaels and it comes as just a regular like steel wire. I take sage green yarn and I wrap it so I just put tacky glue along here and wrap it along with the yarn so that it looks like a stem a little bit more. If you know and you've been watching my videos for a while you know that the place that I film is not close to an outlet so I'd really recommend that you use hot glue for this but I'm just going to be kind of doing a little dramatization of how you should be gluing your lavender. You can also use tacky glue but I really recommend hot glue because it dries a lot faster and it's more secure. So this is the entire flower and then remember at the beginning we did the top part of that flower with all those double crochets. This is what you're going to put with glue securing so always remember to put the glue right now. I don't have any because I'm not near an outlet but secure with glue here and continue each section by section putting tacky glue and simply just wrapping the lavender flower around the wire. You can do as big of a gap as you want. I usually do like this to make it kind of a more full flower, but keep adding tacky glue and wrapping around and around. Again, I do not have tacky glue with me, but <laughs> tacky glue or hot glue will work. Once you get to the end of the flower, you'll have these two loose tail ends. And what I like to do is just tie a simple knot to attach it. And then I also just scooch it up a little bit secure it with glue here and once that's secured with the glue you can snip that part off so obviously mine is not secured with glue but i'm going to cut anyways and then you have your finished lavender flower if you have a little bit of the wire poking out at the end because for me this wire is always a bit too long for a bouquet i like to kind of stop it over here um, you can just take wire cutters and snip that off. Just make sure everything is glued so it doesn't unravel. And I'll insert a quick video, a quick TikTok that I made about how to wrap the flower bouquet. Your bouquet is all wrapped then you're all done i hope you guys like this tutorial this updated version of the lavender flower that i did from last year and if you have any questions please leave them below or message me on instagram i know in my last video about flowers a lot of people help each other in the comments so if you leave a comment with a question and i can't get to it someone else may my other updated flower patterns will be posted again after this one and i will link them all down below hope this was a better quality video for you to follow along with and you can see the stitches a little bit more clearly and yeah see you in the next one bye